welcome you to the Sacred Commerce podcast. This is episode eight, and I am blessed to be joined by an old friend, Eden Fadzo, who is currently in Phoenix, Arizona. And welcome, Eden. So good Thank to you. have you on. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here with you. So a little backstory for our listeners. Um, Eden and I met in, I want to say 2007, or was it 2008? One of those years, it sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Which was basically right after the first edition of Sacred Commerce, the original edition of Sacred Commerce was published. And that edition was self-published by Ayman and I. We printed a thousand copies. And we gave pretty much all of them away. It wasn't really for sale anywhere. And we did that quite intentionally. It wasn't, we knew it was a little bit early. Like, I feel like Sacred Commerce is just beginning to kind of like, it's dawn, you know, its day is just about to dawn, you know. Mm -hmm. And we knew that from back there. We knew people were barely even getting into conscious commerce, let alone Sacred Commerce, you know. And so we didn't want to try and push it and try and get on talk shows. And like, we were like, this is going to have a life of its own. And we're just going to put it out there and see what, see what the universe wants from us. And so within, you know, six months, a year of it being published, we were working with Gabriel Cousins in the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center, which is where Eden and I met. And, um, Gabriel was uh, a big fan of Sacred Commerce and really got it. And he and I were very much peers in this lifetime and, and very, very good friends. But, you know, the kind of peers that both of them, both of them didn't have very many peers. They're both so brilliant and so awake in so many ways and still human, of course. Um, and, and I just I love their relationship because they would they would fight a lot, you know, because they were both so opinionated and had such a deep, you know, spiritual understanding. And so it always grew, you know, our work and his work, I think, when we were all together, because there was just this real meeting of minds. And so Gabriel very kindly was like, why don't you, you know, hold an evening and introduce it to everyone at the Tree of Life? I mean, this is what we do. We are sacred commerce. You know, we are living our purpose here. And we were like, yeah, that would be great. And so we gathered in the, I think it was in the offices, wasn't it? Yeah, the Dharma room. In the Dharma room, that's right. What a perfect place for it to launch. And in a in a way, that really was its launch. I mean, you were there in the first time that we had, we had one launch in San Francisco to our friends to celebrate the book. And then this was the first time we'd really presented it, you know, just, just for the concept. And um I think for many of you, it just was an instant, like it caught caught your attention. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you have been living into it ever since. And that's what we always hoped was that we knew we'd just hit the tip of the iceberg and that it would take all of us living into it to really unpack the meaning of this. So I would love you to share your um, you know, how that was for you and what, what your first takeaways were from that, because I, I know that you're one of the people that has really taken the baton and run with it. Well, you know, yeah, I remember that evening as if it were yesterday, because at the time that you, um, that you, you and I did that beautiful presentation. I was managing the store at the retreat center. And what had happened was um, you know, I, I I had like a period, I kind of was thrown into it because the previous manager just kind of left suddenly. And I was like, oh, all of a sudden the manager, you know, as life does. And I really had to kind of find my own rhythm and my own stride. And I did really well in that role. Um, I didn't realize that I was doing well, right? But it was brought to my attention by someone who was paying attention to the numbers that the store was doing and so forth. 
And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. But because the position sometimes came with a little bit of, um, <laughs> I don't want to say stress, you know, stress is the, the word that is coming, you know, for lack of a better choice of word, but required focus, concentration, and really holding space and really holding energy. Okay, so it, it required a lot of you more than would appear on the surface. Um, but in order to make the experience comfortable for someone who's buying, you can't present that way necessarily. So without knowing it, in that space is where I really got to practice sacred commerce. And so when you and Iman came and gave that presentation, it gave language, it gave structure, it gave history, it gave depth to what was happening. And something just clicked for me. Because for me, what I would do is I would come in before the store even opened. I would, you know, set the tone energetically with oh, chills set in the resonance. <laughs> yes, I would do that. And I would, with intention, I would say, I would focus on the experience that I wanted every person to have. Like if you remember the story, it was kind of the heart of the building. So even if you were going to the bathroom, you were yeah, going to the well, office, you just, there would be constant traffic. It also became a place where staff members would just come up to chill, just hang out in the store for five minutes, just to shake up the energy and, you know, go back and do whatever they were doing. So for me, it was really important. It was one of the few cool, as in, it was one of the few cool, as in not hot rooms. Yes in the desert that's part of why people would literally come to chill <laughs> yes exactly I didn't even get that part but yes exactly you know so I was like okay so the vibe needs to be one of um just relaxation people just need to feel good need to feel safe need to feel held supported when they're in there and also you know what was sold in there were a lot of really expensive things that required education like how do you sell a 90 dollar multivitamin right it's like what's the difference between that and going to walgreens and getting the 15 dollar centrum silver right so kind of really allowing people to have an educational experience so my focus was i want you to know more and feel empowered and you know to make good choices so that whether you spend money here or not, you leave with something that feeds you outside of your life. So that was always the focus for me. But somehow, while focusing on empowering people's knowledge base about health or, um, you know, about eating or about different tweaks and so forth and not focusing on the sales themselves, the products just sort of sold themselves. You know, it was just like, right and Resident so marketing exactly you know and for me the mission was always about creating that experience for people creating that experience for staff members creating that experience for the guests and the sales just happened and so sacred commerce to me when you shared that doctrine it just brought everything together it just meshed together in my mind um yeah to answer that question uh, that's how it started for me it's so beautiful and it's so beautiful to hear your your memory being so vivid of it I mean I I remember it but of course it was the first time I'd presented it so it's lovely to hear that it was as vivid for you you know um and and I felt so like that you know the first time I came across it in Egypt it was just like yes it's like this is making sense of something that I feel you know, so deeply in me. It's like it's giving words to something that I want to live into, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So share with us a little bit of your journey with it since then, because it's, it's um, you know, it's a good coming up over 15 years since we've had the pleasure of catching up. And I know you've um, turned into quite an entrepreneur in your own right and over that time period so share with us a little bit how that's been and whether some of the some of the things have you know 
come more into your mind or mean more to you now? Like, how has it grown in you? Oh, my gosh. The fact that you said grown in you, that is one of the keys that, you know, sacred commerce is, um, it's not just an idea, but it's something that's alive, right? And it becomes its own ecosystem, right? It sort of breeds, right? And so um, that is an interesting story. And I'll start with something that happened about a year or so after we met. Um, You, Iman and Gabriel, and Shanti, of course, who's Gabriel's um, partner, wife, you know, started GabrielCousins.com. And so for a brief period of time, I came on, you know, uh, to be part of that team. And um, Ayman had said something to me, as as Ayman would do. You know how he can just say things just so uh, matter of fact, you know, um, so poignant and like to the point, right? Just yes. but like in the hallway. <laughs> yes, in the hall. Exactly. That's what he. Yeah. Th- that's exactly. You know, <laughs> that was exactly the move, right? And he said something to me that I found kind of jarring, but I just kind of shook it off, you know. And um, but I can't remember in what context. And he was like, "Oh yeah, you clearly have no self esteem. You don't. You don't think very much of yourself at all." And, uh, you know, (laughs) I can see, I can see just, just by the way you hold yourself. And then he just carried on with the meeting, you know, like he hadn't just dropped a truth bomb on me. Right. (laughs) And with no judgment, it's like, yeah, I've been there. You just need to deal with your self-esteem and it'll all be fine. Like, yes, (laughs) not like it's something wrong, but like deal with it because, you know, it's holding you back. (laughs) Yeah. And, and because he was such a love ball and such a joy ball, you couldn't take it personally like it, you know, it didn't yeah. take you down. He just left me a seed um, for me to, to, to grow, right, with. And I didn't think anything of it. And I just kind of put it aside. But the seed was in the darkness there germinating without my knowledge. Okay, so we'll, we'll go through that. And then fast forward a few years later, I have always had this love affair with botanicals and um, and sort of, um, you know, earth-based products, you know, whether they be, you know, for dietary purposes, for medicinal purposes. And um, I found that I had a knack for making beauty products, you know, for skin and hair. Okay, so I went on that journey And for me, it wasn't always just about like how to make your skin glow or, you know, your hair follicles more full or prevent, you know, it was always like, okay, energetically, there is a quality to this herb or to this oil that is part of the synergy of this creation, right? And there's also um, on the surface, beauty is very superficial, Right. And if we look at the context of um, present day commerce and almost it's almost like a psychological violence that is accompanying the marketing of most beauty products. It's like, how do we take that um, sort of sacred, ancient sacred, um, you know, ritual of anointing ourselves daily? right? Like it's been done for thousands and thousands of years. And how do we bring the beauty back into it? Yeah. How do we bring um, the the self-respect back into it? How do we connect to the communities where these ingredients are coming from and really kind of hold the wisdom of their traditions in the proper respect that they deserve? You know, how do we create trade that's yeah. beneficial yeah. to distributors to um, the people who are harvesting this, to the people who are selling this in their stores? And how do we make people feel better about encountering our marketing? Like it's, it's like, if you encounter my marketing, you should feel better. You should feel like there's more possibility. You should feel 
more expansion, regardless of whether you buy my lotion or not. Just encountering yeah. my lotion. You know, you should feel that drop of joy, right? Um, so really kind of um, starting my business from that place, right? Letting that be the floor, right? And um, so, so, so that, that was one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is, as you know, as a long time, lifelong entrepreneur, is that in order to have a business, it is always asking something of you. It's a relationship, <laughs> right? So yeah. you want to have the business that you've never had. You're going to have to be someone you've never been before. Mm -hmm. And so that's where yeah, that emotion, that. That. right? It's asking you to grow up with it, to rise yeah. up with it, you know, when it's done the right way. And, um, and it's a communication right? Like it, it always communicates to you who you're being, how you're being in that moment, um, how you're interacting, you know, uh, what your mission, if you're off mission, right? And if it's starting to feel a bit draining or feeling unfulfilling, all of those things, it's always asking something of you. And then it yeah. goes back to Iman's little seed that he planted in the hallway, <laughs> right? <laughs> And he says, it's like, so all my um, self-esteem stuff, all my um, unhealed, unaddressed trauma, all of that had to come with me on this journey of becoming an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. And so fast forward to, I, I had this real mission to help people create beauty businesses and I started specifically with beauty businesses for um, for black natural hair like mine, right? Or yeah. um, and skincare because you know we were being marketed to in a way that felt really disrespectful, but being profited off of and being excluded deliberately from the table. So it's like, okay, how do we create our own table? How do we do something that is, you know? So I started that and I feel really proud that I've helped, you know, dozens of women all over the world create their, their natural products. Some just make a few thousand dollars that help with like maybe a family vacation. Um, I have one who's been in Oprah and Vogue and Allure. So it's like the full spectrum of, Beautiful. of success. Um, and one thing I noticed is that it's never about the information, you know? It's like, oh, you, you can't be an entrepreneur because you don't have the right information. That's, I've seen people with the most half-baked product, half-baked information sell circles around people who have all the tech and all the this and all the support and all the resources. So it's really about something else, like that resonance inside, that alchemical journey inside, right? So it's like, yeah. do I believe in myself enough to do this? You know, do, and if I do this, do I feel comfortable enough with being myself while I do this? So one of the things I noticed is sometimes you can give all the, a person all the information and they really just can't take action. And the inability to take action has nothing to do with anything external. It's an inside job. Yeah. Or sometimes people will take all the action and when I meet them, I, I know I'm meeting a merchant priestess. I know that I am just the resin, everything. And then when I encounter, so I follow them all on Instagram, Facebook, all of the things. So let's just say, let me actually get my real phone instead of using my giant glass of water. So, yeah, you know, I'm looking through Instagram, da, 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 you know, just checking on my folks and I see something and it's a beauty business and, um, I don't know who this is or why I followed them, but I know that if I followed them, it's probably because I know them. And I can't even recognize who I'm looking at. Like, it just looks like it could be a Dove commercial. Like, it, it's just, I don't understand. And then I finally figure out who it is. I'm like, oh my God, that's who that is? You know, and I, I see the distance between who they are and what they're doing. And what they're doing is really kind of trying to line up 
with the convention and they've completely abandoned the soul of why they wanted to do this. So even though that seed is there of their soul, again, it becomes about that alchemical journey. It's like, how do I, it, it's amazing. It's, it's, really, it's really a job to become yourself and to become yourself fully in public, right? And yep. to trust that that's enough. That's enough to move the needle, right? So then yep. that brings me to where I am now, where I'm moving more to a place of providing energetic support for people to work on that inside stuff that allows them to show up and engage in sacred commerce mm -hmm. um, fully as themselves, you know? And I use uh, energy healing, astrology, um, spiritual coaching, which is something that I've learned. Um, I'm a coach in someone else's mastermind, Laura Waldman, who is someone I would love for you to connect with because she is definitely emergent priestess. Um, so yeah, I think you guys would really, and she's in the UK too. So, you know, it'll oh, be perfect. easier. <laughs> that makes it easier. And I actually have some face-to-face -face time with somebody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you would love Laura and I think she would love you. And um, so she's created a really beautiful space that talks about money, right? Like that, <laughs> that journey that we have, it's like money, sex, um, visibility, all of those things are going to trigger that, that alchemical journey, right? Yeah. So, so she works in that space and I've been through her mastermind three times and then she invited me to be a coach to kind of hold space for people as her group grew and she couldn't have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with everyone. So through there, I also get to practice um, the principles that uh, you and I and really put a, a beautiful name to. Obviously, I haven't gone super in depth right like as much as you would have um but i know that that seed and that little shrub that you proud you planted is growing inside me and it's going to be fun to see how it evolves over time yeah um i'm not sure at what point i lost you but i was just saying how beautiful it is to see how you've grown into it and to see your woman so you know proudly present and uh you know just in your being i mean obviously 15 years is a long time of course we've you know both grown phenomenally uh, because we're on our path so you do but it's just lovely to witness as i'm seeing you again for the first time in in 15 16 years oh well thank you so much mm -hmm. um you know i was thinking of i'm and he popped into my head um several times actually um since you said okay because I reached out and said yes I'd be happy to be interviewed for the po podcast and then I think last week you said how about next week or whatever and yeah. I had this this flash of like I can't be on the podcast I have nothing to say and you know <laughs> you know and Iman was like yeah mm -hmm. I told you you had low self-esteem you know <laughs> <laughs> oh. so uh, and <laughs> self-esteem is something that's always going to be increasing because self-esteem yeah. is the love that we earn from ourselves nobody yeah. can give it to us it is what we go like hey nice job. I like it that you did, you know, like where it's our pat on the back. It's not like given to us from God or, you know, from our friends, it's our own. And that's, I think it's something that's quite misunderstood in that way. People are trying to earn self-esteem and it's like, yeah, you earn it, but you earn it from you, which yes. really means that you, you, it puts you in a place where you've got to be true to yourself because that's, what's going to make you happy with what you've done and it's you know it make you love yourself more and be like yeah wow well done that's that's great you did that you know yeah that's that's exactly 100 it it's the real self-esteem versus approval right yeah um and and it's interesting that also like it was very clear to me as i was processing this this like self is this invitation to 
to grow my esteem, right, by showing up for the podcast was that um, the the esteem comes from doing it. You don't have the self-esteem first and then you do it. It's like the entrepreneurial right. journey. It's like the doing is in, the healing is in the doing before you're yeah. ready to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's why, you know, we always say it's such an amazing path to enlightenment because your feedback suddenly goes from being like just your family or whatever, your, your job to like all the people you work with, all the people you interact, you know, like your the feedback starts getting more and more and more rapid because you're dealing with more and more people, you know, um, and that's that's the accelerator, you know, that is the growth accelerator. Mm -hmm. I'm curious over the years of like pondering all of this whether there's anything that has come to you particularly about the role of us as much and priestesses as opposed to the the you know I mean I think in the Egyptian time the merchant priests are a little bit more talked about in the history as is quite common um and yeah, I'm just curious if there's anything that has come to you more on, on that side of it as you've lived into it. Hmm. That's a really interesting question. Um, you know, that's an interesting question because most of the people who come to me are women, right? Um, there've been a few guys, you know, um, but I would say it's like 97% women, right? Um, and in the circles that I move, those <laughs> numbers still play out, right? It yeah. becomes 97% women. So I guess if I'm thinking of all the people who, whether they self-identify as that or not, who I would consider to be merchant priests, the way they move is kind of different now that I think about it. They're doing the same thing, but, you know, that divine masculine is kind of moving more assertively in the space and is um, like the, the visible action is more apparent. Whereas with the merchant priestess, I feel like it really is about resonance. It's, it's sort of more feminine. It's more about holding the space for that transformation to occur and trusting the space to do the transformation. Does that make yeah. sense what I just said? Absolutely. I mean, and in, a, and in a way, you really started with that when you talked about how you set the space for the Tree of Life store. And that was, you know, that was what changed everything I mean I can remember it was never really a store it was just like a jumble mm -hmm. and you know you came in and you you know oh chills you valued it mm -hmm. and it's that act of valuing what's good and true that I think a priestess it's like you know my Instagram account is merchant priestess purely because Rowan Gabrielle was taken and I didn't even know what Instagram was at the time. But actually, as I as I grow into more of myself and, you know, and, and this work and, and kind of being the center of it these days, you know, the merchant priesthood is someone that is a connoisseur when she shops. She's a she thinks about she buys by resonance. But the fact that it's merchant priesthood priestess and that now I am kind of growing into taking sacred commerce more and more into the world um, really makes sense because it has been how I have acted. I've been very lucky to be very abundant in this lifetime. And a lot of money has flowed through me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a stockpiler, but a lot of money tends to flow through me. And what I use it for is buying things of high resonance. And I really do always have shopped by resonance. And I went to, um, a, eco, a movie about an eco fashion luxury brand, the first UK luxury brand to really kind of make it with 100% sustainability. It's uh, called No Frills. And they made a beautiful movie about this woman. She's a, definitely a merchant priestess. Um, and 
But there was this part of me that's like, wow, I'm 50 now. When I was 15, I chose to start buying new clothes unless they were, you know, eco or organic or, you know, or secondhand or whatever. But I was like, I'm not supporting this industry because it has no ethics, you know. And now there's finally like a big movie. I'm like, wow, it's such a long time. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, but I think that is part of the role of the merchant priestess is to make those everyday transactions sacred. Yes. You know, and and sometimes you can't find great things to buy. So you find a great person to buy from. Sometimes it's the person there's always. I mean, I think you will probably relate to this, you know, after being at the Tree of Life and all of that, we all spent a lot of many, many, many months in and out of there. And there was a level of perfection that kind of crept into us. And I then moved to the Middle East and it's like, well, nothing is organic and probably half of it is organic, but they don't know it's organic. Like, you know, you can't go and do your perfect shopping anywhere. And so I then had to like completely just kind of let go of all of that and realize that there's always in every situation, there's always a highest priority. And sometimes that highest priority is connecting to the people because that's why you're there. And it's your resonance that matters. And sometimes it's the resonance of the thing and it's its resonance that's coming to you. So like you're always following resonance, but what that looks like really adjusts to your circumstances you know Mm -hmm. yeah um that that letting go of even judgment right yeah and just kind of it's like you can't be um curious and judgmental at the same time you know so it's just like okay am I going to be judging or I'm just going to be curious as to what is the highest resonance that I'm being invited to to connect with here yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was a big one for me especially on the food one being such a health nut it was just like I went to the Middle East and it's like I had no idea where the meat came from and like I had no idea where you know and and really it wasn't of high quality and in the beginning I didn't eat any of it and then I would be at people's houses and they'd have cooked something for me and I'm like no the highest thing is to eat it's been cooked with love like the hardest thing to eat what they're serving me you know because I'm here as like a representative of my culture coming to their culture like I need to absorb their culture you know that's the highest priority at this moment in time like you know my body will deal with it it's not going to be the (laughs) the end of the world do anything bad no it's not it's not my lifestyle you know yeah it's a blessing I love that you brought that because um, Gabriel Cousins um, always used to talk about, you know, like the consciousness with which the food is prepared as being as important as the nutrients, right? Because he'd say, you you don't want people eating your bad mood. You know what I mean? (laughs) Exactly. exactly yeah so it's like uh so so that is you know and then there's one um incident at the tree had so many amazing people that gathered there um which I guess is another you know Gabriel being a merchant priest is that you're able to attract you know holding space to attract high resonance people to you right to build something together um so another merchant priest, even though he wouldn't identify himself as that, and actually had been a monk uh, prior to coming to the tree. So he didn't touch money at all. He did everything. (laughs) But that's a whole other story. I don't know what happened if he does now, but he did, um, he was the gardener at the time, um, Alden, and he did this demonstration with dowsing rods for us um, at the Tree of Life dorms. And so he had like, a beautiful organically grown lettuce or whatever from the tree of life garden. Um, And then he had a, I can't remember, there was a second option. And then the third option was some wilted iceberg lettuce from, you know, from like the, from the convenience store in town, right? 
yeah. not organic. Yeah. And so he, you know, with dowsing road, rods, rods with his eyes um, blindfolded, so he wasn't cheating. You know, he did the energetic demonstration of the frequency of each item, right? Yeah. So yeah. it was as you would expect, right? One was like, whoa, another one was like, huh? And then at the end of it, he had us pray over the quote unquote low frequency food and its resonance increased further than the highest uh, frequency food. So just intention, wow. the intention, it, it really kind of cemented to me. It's like, yes, you can eat the food, but you have to bring your intention to the food. You have to understand, especially if it's, you know, living food and it has water in it, bring your prayers to the food, like ask your the food to really deliver its nutrients ask your body to be you know so that's a resonance thing too even if you're eating a, a big mac like you know yeah just bring some love into that process and from gratitude i mean you know big macs turn up in places where there is no other food like in the middle right. of like, a highway or something you know yeah not that i've ever eaten one yet but you never know Still a long life <laughs> <laughs> right right so it's just it's just like um yeah so that's something I didn't even think of but also humility having some humility you know um sometimes being humble can also be high resonance so true yeah really really crucial really crucial and it and it allows you to always learn I mean there's one thing I just loved about Iman he was incredibly judgmental in one way in in the in the way of being opinionated but as soon as he met you or you were in his field he would drop all of it and he would just meet you and find out you know mm -hmm. like even though he was so studied and learned and had these, you know, very strong opinions when it came to being face to face to anybody, it was, you know, just you meet who's in front of you and you learn from everybody. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they're there for a reason. That is so true. And I think I, I might even have had that conversation um, within the days uh, that he transitioned or that we found out that he had transitioned with Dwight, um, who was someone I also met. And so, you know, um, it, it's really interesting just the level of impact that Iman had, even though he's not someone I knew deeply, deeply well or personally, just the impact that he had. It's been a very long time since someone, um, who wasn't like a family member or like a, a really super close friend passed away and it stopped my day. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I got on the Facebook messenger with Dwight and we were just, we just went through all the stuff, you know. Sharing um, random stories. Yeah. And um, he, he was a force of nature. He is a force of nature still, right? he is yeah he's, he's he's gone viral before any of us <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yeah yes so um yeah I really do feel like I think I I think he died incredibly um soul satisfied with what he had done in this lifetime I, I mean I knew that would have that conversation many years before he passed away he 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 knew his soul knew what he had delivered. And I think there was a part of me being younger in my, my spirituality um, that didn't see our success in the same way he did, because I was still looking at the Western view of success, like, you know, dollars in the bank or whatever names on. And, you know, more and more and more, I see like no he did exactly what he came here to do which was plant all those seeds in all of us you know and we're the ones that will actually 
you know, more take it to the to the rest of humanity because it is a tool. What he brought through are all tools for humanity's evolution, and he knew that. And you know, he he always used to be like, you know, I feel kind of bad because I don't really care that much about any people other than you and Asna and my kids. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> because I just don't have time. My, my, I've got to think about humanity. <laughs> like he was just so focused on creating these tools that would support people in m- more rapid evolution that would take us out of these, you know, places of, of drama and like, just, I mean, so much drama. Yeah. Like when I met him, he used to be like, why do you keep up with all your friends like that? You guys just gossip about drama. And I would just be kind of offended, you know, but within a couple of years, I just realized he was totally right. Like it was, I didn't feel better when I got off the phone. I didn't, you know, I was keeping up with all my friends in England and whatever, but I wasn't keeping up in a way that was nourishing. It was a, it was in a way of like, oh, so-and-so did this and this one, you know, like, and oh my God, did you see this? And like, just gossip and drama, and when I dropped all of that, when I when I realized like how right he was and I just was like, oof, done. Like I had so much more time for my creativity and my life's work and, you know. So, yeah. He was he was an absolute force. And I mean, I you can imagine I never stopped learning any day I was with him, which was luckily 30 years of days how many yeah. that is <laughs> that that is um that is a long time to be partnered with someone and and also you know you're able to receive it you're able to hold it right because not everyone was ready for for Iman right that's true and yeah. Um, and he was he, a lot. He, he was a lot. <laughs> he, was, he was so much, and so it was really a perfect pairing. You know, it's almost like exactly what we're talking about: how the merchant priest presents um, in relation to how the merchant priestess um, presents. Yeah. Is that you help you hold the um, <clears throat> excuse me the resonance of that chamber? You know. And he was like the one, you know, dropping the joy and and flitting around and so forth. But definitely that holding, you know, almost like a womb, right? Yeah. Of holding that creation. Um, And both of them are necessary, even if they look different, you know, and they're still working, even with him transitioned. Um, And, and, you know, you say... He, well, you say that he says that, you know, he didn't really care for people, but in in his own way, we all felt really deeply cared for by him in the ways that matter. I I really agree. If you were if you crossed his path in a day, he would be right there. But he he meant like you know how people keep up with each other and like, mm-hmm. like phone or send cards or birthday presents. Like he he didn't have time for all of the social graces. So yeah. he felt a bit like I mean he you know once in a blue moon he'd give me a birthday present because it's like he happened to find something you know but he would yeah. never do any of those like he was a great education in busting um through like you know any kind of societal like obligations that I thought were important <laughs> like just forget about it like just no you know uh, I mean he gifted people all the time but it was just whenever he wanted to it was never because it was your birthday or because you know right. like and sometimes suddenly it would be because it's your birthday and you'd be like, what? <laughs> like, really? You remembered it was my birthday? Thanks. <laughs> so it was great because it just always, you you know, you'd just be like grateful for whatever it happened to turn up. <laughs> yeah. No expectations. <laughs> no expectations. Oh my gosh, he was hilarious. I have a funny Iman story um, about social graces. So um, I don't <laughs> oh, know if you saw those. <laughs> Do you still have um you had a you had a puppy um Ziggy was that Ziggy his name Ziggy Stardust Ziggy Stardust 
Yes. So um, I met Ziggy Stardust at the tree, he came along to the tree and I can't remember what was happening. I don't know if Ziggy was doing something or, but somehow I referred to Ayman as Ziggy's dad. And Ayman <laughs> was so offended. He was like, what? <laughs> what you think I'm his father I am not his father <laughs> do we look alike <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh yeah that's so I mean he was it, it took us about I think five years of marriage until I managed to get an animal in the house and before I met <laughs> Iman I mean I had cats dogs horses chicken you know you name it there was a lot of animals in my life and I had never conceived of a life without animals like I'm definitely someone that likes her familiars you know yeah and they're they're a part of my magic you know they're yeah. they're little extensions of of my energy in a way they do things I can't and uh when he finally busted um he I, I'd really taken care of him for a while and at the end of it he was like you've just been so amazing you deserve to get an animal and I was, he was still like sick in bed and I was like I didn't wait for him to get out of bed I went that same day and like <laughs> got a cat and came back like I was like okay I'm not waiting for you to change your mind about this one. smart woman smart and, woman. and but what's amazing is that cat um Hazel she was such a queen. She was, uh, we rescued her. She was, she had been a show cat her entire life. She was nine and she was um, a Persian, the long haired, smushed yeah. face. And she came into our lives and we thought she was the ugliest cat we'd ever seen. We were just like, what is this cat? Is this <laughs> fake? Oh my God. Like, and I'm going to just like, take the cat back. Like, and I was just like, yeah, but no, but I want a cat. And that was like day one. And then day, by like two weeks in, this cat had captured our hearts in such an incredible level. And she was incredibly wise. She's actually come back as snowy in the last year, um, oh. 15 years later. Um, but she is the one, and I would have said this to you just as I'm saying it to you, that taught him about stillness and softness and caring. Because mm. if you wanted to caress her, you had to come to her with calm. And if you came like all Iman style, she'd just be like, boof, out the room. Yeah. And he, this cat's love was so incredible like it was such a powerful love mm. that you wanted it like you know everybody wanted to touch her like everybody wanted her her graces and he would always get so mad because he only got them if I was away <laughs> so he'd be like as soon as you're back <laughs> yeah. but yeah so I was like yeah see this is why I need animals because they can teach you things that you're just not learning from me <laughs> yeah you know, yeah. they change a household. They do change a household, you know. And, you know, it's just interesting. I've heard you speak on the podcast and other conversations. Your um, Egyptian past life connection. So it makes sense that animals would come into your life eventually some way or somehow, you know, right. to continue the journey. Yeah. 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 I wonder how many times this cat has been with me because she came six months before Iman's departure, which we didn't have any idea he was leaving imminently. So it was just like, you know, um, and then by some miracle, we'd gotten her a passport because we thought we were going to go to Egypt for the winter. And mm. so when he when he passed, she was ready and she has absolutely been our healer. She's just held the resonance of of sweetness and tenderness and love that of course you miss if your partner or your dad is is you know not with you anymore yeah. you know and me and Aslan Aslan said to me one day he was like he was like wow I mean you know Iman had to go because he was done but man if Snowy went as well that would be bad oh <laughs> yeah you know because she carried that sweetness that he get he he gave so much sweetness to our lives and and 
it's of course not the same, you know, but it's like enough that you can, that you can, with you know, weather the change, yeah. you know, that you feel like micro dosing. Yeah. 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 That's an important part of, of the grief journeys to have that, you know, that sweetness. It really, really is. I mean, I, I really, it's incredible that she came as a white cat because I really do credit her for energetically carrying a very important, you know, resonance for us just, you know, finding our way again, you know, finding our new way, Yeah. our new way. Yeah. Yeah. Precious being, very grateful to her. Yeah. And also kind of holding on to the spaces and the feelings that matter and not getting so flustered by the externals that are changing and, you know. Yeah. It's almost like a grounding, you know, element to to our lives. Mm -hmm. And and so funny to be like on the road with the white caps, you know, but like that's (laughs) how it's been. (laughs) Yeah. That's oh. how it's been. She's been our our guide. Yeah. yeah, you just have to keep her out of other people's plants. That's all, and then everything. Yeah, is fine. <laughs> <laughs> amongst other things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, is there any other um, stories you feel to share, or? I mean, you've shared so much, but I just, if there's any final things that you'd like to touch on. Um, I think, uh, I think I, I feel pretty complete. I think that, um, just, just gratitude, just gratitude for, um, however this, uh, this living, doctrine of sacred commerce found you whatever forces conspired to bring that to you and whatever uh, and just thanking you both for saying yes to it and just um, disseminating the seeds in such a dedicated and loving manner and um, yeah I love seeing you know, merchant priests and merchant priestess out in the world and being like, yes, that is a merchant priest. That's a merchant priestess. This is sacred commerce. This is, you know, and it's, and and just seeing how it is evolving with our changing world. Um, and also seeing how it's still the same as it was thousands of years ago at the same time, you know? So. That essence of beauty, goodness, and truth, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's the essence and it always will be. Yeah beauty goodness and truth so yeah much gratitude to you Mm, thank you so much for holding that container for us all thank you thank you I mean I have to say that that's my overwhelming feeling towards Iman even in his passing is just the just gratitude Mm. the strength that he brought it through with was really he was he was the one to, mm-hmm. to do this, to forge this path. And it was a forging, you know, that he yeah. did in, in that one life. But I think a completion of many lives for him as well. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, in retrospect, you can't know it in the moment, but in retrospect, you know, he was the one to do it and you and him together were the ones to, to hold it like, um, yeah. It was just a perfect recipe of all the human qualities you need, the humor, the fortitude, the intelligence, the life experience, the worldly, like all the things, the artistic, yeah. all of it, you know, had to yeah. be in play in order for it to come. So I can see how, you know, you were the chosen vessels for it to come forth in the modern age. Mm. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for recognizing it and for carrying the torch into so many other people's lives and for, you know, letting it burn bright in you all this time. It's so beautiful to see. And um, how can people find you and find your work if they want to work with you now moving forward? Um, Now moving forward, I have a YouTube channel. Um, 
and in the past it's been dedicated to um, mentoring aspiring beautypreneurs but I am in the process of introducing new content that's more around energetic support for sacred commerce so if they go to my YouTube channel and subscribe as the new content comes out they will they'll be the first know. to know they'll be the first to know and what is your YouTube channel it's just my name Eden Croft Eden Croft mm -hmm. ah I introduced you wrong <laughs> no it, I'm Eden Fadzel Croft so okay yeah. but your your YouTube channel is Eden Croft okay great yes. and we'll put a link to that in the show notes and Instagram do we do Instagram as well I don't do Instagram. Um, okay. I do Facebook, um, but I think that YouTube is safest for now. Um, as in the description of each video, I'll put, um, yeah, my Instagram is just merely to follow other people, but I don't post. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I started. <laughs> Eventually, you end up doing a post. <laughs> yes, I think it's imminent for me. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so, so much. And uh, may your new endeavors, you know, bring light to many, many, many people and, and may they bring much abundance and prosperity to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, wishing you the same as you move forward with the sacred commerce journey and uh, emotional alchemy journey that um, you may touch many more lives, continue to have amazing impact and feel fulfilled and prosperous oh thank you thank you thank you all right my dear thank you so much thank for your time and this time we've had together thank you so much for yours too it's so lovely to catch up with you and and to see you you're so shiny <laughs> <laughs> thank you really nice and i hope one day we'll get all our kids together yeah that would be so we'll, fun we'll let you know if we make it that way and you'll let us know if you make it this way absolutely we'll do 